Welcome to highlights for the Cupra VIP sim racing event from Spa Francorchamps. The VIP event sees some massive stars, the likes of FC Barcelona goalkeeper Marc Andre Testergen, Sebastian Stoll, Tom Beck, and more taking on some of sim racing's top talents from the Cupra Sim Racing series. The round would see two 20 minute races, the first of which following the qualifying order, which saw Florian Haaser take pole position from Jack Keithley. A good launch from him saw him lead the field into La Source for the very first time, but with Jack Keithley on the inside, would he be able to hang on? Late on the brakes and trying to go all the way around the outside was Torsten Ulrich. Towards the back of the pack, though, we had a bit of a calamitous incident between some of our VIP drivers. No real damage on any of the cars, though, and they all managed to keep going. At the front end, though, we had Torsten Ulrich going down the inside of Florian Haaser into Le Com for the first time after he made that move on Jack Keefley. So two positions gained on the first lap, and he would lead down towards Ravage for the first time. Slavin Stulich would make a move on the inside of Moritz Lerner. There'd be a bit of contact between the two, and he'd push him out wide towards Adam Pinches. Pinches would really lose out through all of this in this monstrous battle pack towards the bottom end of the top ten. And this battle would continue all the way through the lap as they're still too wide going through Stavolo and towards Curve Paul Frere. Eventually, they would settle out and go single file, but not after an awful lot of contact. Into the final chicane, Torsten Ulrich defending from Florin Haaser. Florin Haaser may be trying to make his way back up to the lead of the race, but Torsten Ulrich seems to be settled for now. Behind this, though, you've got Alex Dornadon making a move and getting up into fourth position. On board with Florin Haaser with his best attempt yet to take the race lead again after losing it on the first lap into Le Com, and he is going to do it up and over the curbs and easily as you like into the race lead. Alex Dornadon, the king of Spa, wasn't really content with staying in fourth position. He'd go around the outside of Jack Keith, a little bit of bumping and barging through Le Com for them, and around the outside he does go, leaving Le Com. An excellent move, but the inside is still open into Ravage, but that position is done, and onto the podium goes Alex Dornadon. Wouldn't be so settled for very long, though, as Yaroslav Honzik would be uh, mounting a challenge himself to try and get himself onto the podium. But the outside line does work for Dornadon once again. But Honzik's looking very racy come the final half of the race. A really tense battle here, though, between Tim Heinemann, Moritz Lerner, and WTCR driver Mikhail Azkona, who's really playing with the sim drivers. A bit of a dive, though, over the inside of the corner with no name as Tim Heinemann makes contact with Moritz Lerner. Then further contact as he chops a little bit off into the central part of Puon, and Tim Heinemann is escorted massively wide. A three-wide move, though, between Ben Spanky and Adam Pinches, who's trying to make it side-by-side -side through Fania, and Moritz Lerner is running away at the top end. Further contact as this lot are all chopping and changing, and the big gainer from that is Mikel Asgona who moves his way up into sixth place it's still side by side in the background but up towards the front though we've got a battle between Florian Haaser and Torsten Ulrich who are going to go side by side through the final chicane on the very last lap and out of that it is going to be Torsten Ulrich with a great move left it very very late and he is going to take victory in the first race at Spa. Race two would see a full reverse grid, which would put Tom Beck onto pole, but he was unable to take to the start of the race. So it would be Holger Stangl leading from Marks, leading from Mark Andre to Stegen, who had the best launch of the top three and would lead it to turn one. A little bit of contact between himself and Marks, and he was unable to keep it on the road as we run down the hill. He still keeps in second position and jumps into the slipstream on the run towards Eau Rouge. To Stegen broke a little bit early into Le Com, and there was a touch of contact between himself and Felix von der Laden, who would cut across the inside and gain the position anyway. Corentin Ponteau would gain another position as well and move his way onto the podium and then into Ravage, gain another one. Tim Heinemann was also waiting for no one as he would try and move his way up. An aggressive move into the corner with no name gains him the position onto Stegen as well. The next one to try and make a move was Dave Gaming, who'd fire it down the inside into Pill on a touch of contact on the apex there. And Mark andre de Stegen wasn't having any of that. A nice cutback from him, and he would actually hold the position on the run into Fanny. He'd have to break late and hold it around the outside, and that he did do. A mistake, though, into Stavolo, and Dave Gaming would just slip and slide on the brakes a little bit, allowing Sebastian Stahl and Gamer Muscle to get by. Gamer Muscle, though, would eye up an attempt into the bus stop chicane. Let's see how that one goes from his point of view. Fake a left, you're going to go at the right. Okay, that was an illegal move. 
maybe not an ideal move and this also wouldn't go his way as Mikel Asgona dives down the inside into La Source. A slight touch of contact between the two of them and uh, that would be a position lost for him. Adam Pinchhead would be the next one to try and get his way through but that position was done for Asgona at the top end of the field. Corin Tim Ponto was about to relinquish the lead though to a charging Tim Heineman who managed to defend that position for a fair while but Tim Heineman wasn't waiting for anyone. He was desperate for that victory a little bit further down the pack and Maurice Lerner was making a move on Felix von der Laden. He'd get pushed through the move as well with uh, Mikel Azcona directly behind. Following them through, Adam Pinchez and Torsten Ulrich would also gain those positions. Torsten Ulrich would eventually move his way to the front of this pack. However, in a very similar move, we're on board with Mikel Azcona who was going to push Moritz Lerner through once again but try and make it stick for himself. It wasn't able to happen and he would have to settle for third in this pack at least for now. At the front end of the field, though, it would be Tim Heineman coming out of the final corner, leading Corentin Ponteau for victory in second. But the battle for the podium was not done as Moritz Lerner would be down the inside into the final chicane. You've got contact between Mikel Azcona and Torsten Ulrich. There'd be Adam Pinchez who would gain all of those positions and further contact as Yaroslav Honzik was trying to get involved in this. It would be three wide towards the line and it would be Mikel Azcona who would come across the head of that trio. Yaroslav Honzik was trying to gain all of it, but unfortunately wasn't able to. And that wraps up the highlights for the Cupra VIP Sim Racing event from Spa.